In the second part of the Spring Boot Security full tutorial, we continue with the code from the previous video. You can find the playlist with the link you see now in the upper right corner. Today we continue with the Spring Boot Security full tutorial. This time we will start in a browser window to see the result. We start with localhost port 8080. We see the welcome page with one link. Login. We can log in with three users. User. Admin. And developer. First we log in with user. We switch back to the welcome page, but this time we get to see all the info of this user. Also, the menu has been changed. Now we have log out and home. If we choose log out, we get back to start screen. Now we can log in again. This time with admin. We switch back to the welcome page, but this time we get all the info of the admin user. We will now log out again and log in with the developer account. We switch back to the welcome page, but this time we get all the info from the developer user. And we get two additional links at the top. Users and Authorities If we click on Users we get a list of all users, and if we click on Authorities we get a list of all authorities. We can now switch to Eclipse to view the code. We start in Eclipse with the code from the previous video. The link to this video can be found with the link you see now in the upper right corner. First we will briefly go over the Maven Palm XML file. Spring Boot version 3.0.2 Java version 17 And the following dependencies Starter Web Starter Data JPA Starter Security Security Data Starter Time Leaf Time Leaf Extras Spring Security 6 Time Leaf Extras Java 8 Time MariaDB Java Client and Lombok in the application properties file we have server port 8080 and all the data for the MariaDB database. The code of the Spring Boot Security full tutorial has been modified in quite a few places so we are only going to go over the classes that have been modified. In the security configuration we have a few changes in the security filter chain. There are a few endpoints accessible to anyone with a permit all. Then a few endpoints protected with a role. User. Admin. And developer. Then there is the configuration for the login with the. Custom login page. Default success URL. And the failure URL. And finally the configuration for logout. Logout Request Matcher Logout Success URL Delete Cookies And the Invalidate HTTP Session The following classes are the Home Controller, User Controller, and the Authority Controller. In the Home Controller we have The User Service with Constructor Dependency Injection Home with the data of the logged in user Login and the login error. In the user controller we have the user service with constructor dependency injection, the user's endpoint and the user's by ID endpoint. Finally the authority controller. The authority service with constructor dependency injection and the get authorities and get authority by ID. All other classes have not changed since the last video. The last part are all the HTML files. We start with the style CSS file. With a few simple settings. Next is the index HTML file. First we have the HTML tag with the time leaf configuration. The head tag with a fragment. We'll talk about that later. The header part is also replaced with a fragment and then a section of HTML code that only appears when a user is authenticated. 
logged user, roles, and all data of the user who is logged in. Finally, we have another fragment for the footer. Then the custom login page. Here again some fragments. And the form to login. The users page is very simple and consists almost entirely of fragments. The authorities page also consists almost entirely of fragments. Then we have a simple error page. And finally the fragments page. These are all small pieces of HTML code that we can reuse in different places. We have the head fragment with jar set style CSS and the title. The header fragment makes certain links visible or not visible according to whether a user is authenticated or not and has a certain role. The authorities table fragment is the table for the authorities. The user's table fragment is the table for the users. The last fragment is the footer which is visible on all pages. With fragments you can easily reuse HTML and time leaf code across different pages. This was it for the video. Thanks for following to the ends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.